Again, I considered all travail and every right work, that for this a man is envy of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. The fool folds his hands together and eats his own flesh. Better is a handful with quietness than both the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone and there is not a second, yea, he has neither child nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor? Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither says he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul for good? This is also vanity, yea, it is a sore travail. Rastafari. Greetings, giving thanks, Russell Ports, headline of the time. Here we are, beautiful out, nice and cold, nice and cool. 50 degrees, Florida, you know, it happens about once a week, a year. And you gotta take advantage of it. You gotta get out here and you gotta breathe. Because, man, <coughs> I've been in Florida over 10 years and the humidity, the heat, it just, it gets to you, you know? It gets to everybody. And uh, it's hard to live among. You know, there are people, there's some natives here, and they can deal with it very well. When it gets cold, like this, you see them, they got their hoods, they got everything on. You know, the coldest can be, they got the heater up all the way, you walk in their businesses, you feel like your, your hair is burning on your arm. But, um, you know, this is beautiful out here. Thank you for spending the time to uh, listen to what I have to say. Um, you know, I've got, you know, um, what can I say, man? You know, just thank you very much. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the Marley family. And, uh, you know, recently the Marley family is now, um, has signed a contract to be the first licensee of the Marley's name in conjunction with the medical marijuana industry or the cannabis industry. And, uh, you know, they're looking at doing this on a global scale. They want to make, you know, about their projecting revenues to be at least $150 billion globally. They've got a guy, uh, Kennedy, he's running the show. Sounds like a little nervous bug. And, um, you know, apparently he, he, he says, you know, cannabis is not important to him. But, you know, he sees it and it's important to other people. So, um, you know, he's really going to um, fight to end prohibition. That's, that's his pitch. That's his pitch. The thing is, they say if they bring Bob's name out to mainstream, then it's going to somehow, you know, stop prohibition. Well, <laughs> they're only contributing to the prohibition because what we have is an industry now that, that wants to control the medical marijuana trade all over the world as if they haven't already been controlling it this whole time. But that's another story. Now they want to do it out of the shadows. And so, you know, they got their goons everywhere. They're setting up conferences. They're telling you how you can get, you know, involved and how you can get rich. You don't believe none of it, man. All the automation, all the robotics, the, the driverless cars, all the stuff that's happening now, believe me, you ain't going to get a job working with the medical marijuana industry. The only way you're going to work with the medical marijuana industry, industry is if we truly make it legal. See, what they want to say is that, you know, uh, having six ounces at your house is legal. It's legal now. What is the difference between having six and 30? Well, they'll say, well, if you have 30 ounces, you know, you can sell them maybe to kids and get rich. But what if everybody has 30? See, the point is, is that when you legalize it, the price goes down. It becomes like every other, you know, commodity, corn or whatever. Yeah, there's farmers that can grow in bulk, but how much of a demand is there for it? The problem is it cuts into their profit every way around. They know the people that are going to smoke the marijuana are not going to go out to the bars and spend the money. They know that they're not going to kill themselves with the cigarettes. You know, and that's part of the, the population control aspect. They don't want people smoking the marijuana because they're going to be healthy in the future in comparison to people that smoke cigarettes and drink. 
and they're gonna have peop more people alive. That's why now you you hear this push about you know they want to you know counter the whole life extent extension thing with you know we want to die early, which in some in some respects it makes sense. But let John do the work and quit trying to make the whole world you know miserable because you're miserable. You know they've had this in, out in Amsterdam for the longest time. They've been over in London selling the seeds. How does that work out? Nobody can do everything here. People get locked up for years, get years taken out of their life, you know, get branded as felons. Every time you go to apply for a job, you can't get one if you, if you mark that box. But I tell you, every time, you know, in my situation, if you don't mark the box, you get the job. So it just goes to show. Companies won't hire you. And uh, going back to what I'm saying is, the Marley family's only contributing to the suppression because they're giving in to the idea that this system of laws is just. It's not just, okay? We don't follow the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is natural. It's given unto us. And it's, it's a truth that we know. Only that truth can um, be erased from our impression if we allow them to get on top of our heads with their mass confusion and their disinformation and their campaigns that pretend to give people freedom in actuality take freedom away from them. It's like this whole thing with uh, the mass surveillance. They don't want to pass a bill to end mass surveillance. When did this mass surveillance start? It started after 9-11. Was there justification for the mass surveillance? They'll say yes. But ask the millions and millions of people around the country, and you'll find out otherwise. Because their commission report wasn't adequate. It didn't cover the World Trade Center building number seven. And so therefore, there's no justification for the mass surveillance to begin with. But that's their biggest fear is having to lose that so then Edward Snow comes along and he discloses the dirty secrets that they've been holding this whole time you know looking at teenage girls pictures and passing them around to NSA laughing so they don't want to end it now and they just want to go about their way talking about the planes that crash around the world and things of this nature so they can distract the people off of what they need to pay attention to see our problem is we can't focus see when you work on a project you get together as a group, and you come up with a solution, and then you work and do what it takes to reach that goal. But we don't do that. We see something, oh yeah, we'd like to end that surveillance. Hey, maybe Oliver Stone will do it for us. He's only the guy to put out Wall Street to convince us the bailouts were necessary. He's, he's only the guy um, to put out, uh, what was it, Platoon. I mean, this is pure propaganda. These people are pure propaganda. And they're supposed to be our spokespeople. They're not freedom. They're not patriots. These, these, these people in the um, Congress, they want to talk about freedom. They want to talk about Operation Iraqi Freedom. Well, the whole thing, the whole time, it was based on a lie. It was a false premise. And just like if they search a house for marijuana and they find um, heroin, they can't take the heroin. They have to leave it because they didn't have a warrant to search a house for that particular item. So, in the case, the mass surveillance, the justification was 9-11. What we find out was done under a false premise. Therefore, they have to extract that bill. They can't uphold it. It's being valid. So what are we looking at now? They don't want to pass the bill. They want to shut it down. And everybody's going to turn their head. We're distracted again. I tell you, it's just more fuel. Because, um, you know, when, when the real people step up to the plate, we're going to give the people options. And by the way, it's not going to put anybody else in danger. I guarantee you, wipe out the, the entire mass surveillance program, no one in this country is going to be in more danger than they were before.